Are you tired of spending hours in food preparation and wish you could just set it and forget it? Do you hate those old stubborn stains on the floor that regular cleansers just can't touch? Are you tired of old dull knives that can't slice through tomatoes? Are you tired of acne? Are you tired of having to get out of bed to turn off the light? Are you tired of your arms being cold when having to reach outside of a blanket? Are you tired of your boat being sawn, sawn in half? Are you tired of spills being too hard to wipe up with regular paper towels? Are you, are you tired of being tired and out of shape? Well, we have the solution for you. It's called death. It will fix all of your problems permanently. No need to call or go to a store. It's coming to you already. to horror movie talk plus that's right folks we've now transcended genre boundaries and sometimes cover other movies we're a place for horror movie lovers but the plus tells you we also welcome genre curious and genre allies uh this one uh is one of those horror movies we're going to be reviewing a patron selected movie called final destination oh yeah uh, so make sure you rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Full video available on YouTube. Don't be a square. Be sure to squ- to share. <laughs> and I always fucking stumble on that thing. <laughs> Don't be a square. Be sure to square. Also, check out patreon.com slash horror movie talk, the equivalent of the adult section in your video rental store. If you want to add your pee to the community pool, go to horrormovietalk.com or call 682-253-4468 and leave us a voicemail. As always, we have... Oh, not always... <laughs> Today, sitting right across from me via Riverside video conferencing capabilities is Fart Simpson. <gasps> and David. Hey, guys. Mike. Hello. <laughs> is it me you're looking for? Good morning. Yeah, we just actually recently on Facebook got um asked directly if we could have fart back on the show and it was like yeah why not next next episode what did you um, say <laughs> so thanks fart for coming on excited Absolutely, to talk guys. about final destination yep uh, it's always great to have have your drops do you have the full hanna barbera theme like a uh, oh yeah sound effects you got it <laughs> <laughs> do the do the uh running away sound oh. oh yeah i got that hold on i want him to... <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i want him to run off the cliff and then realize after he's off the cliff that he's off the cliff okay you know? and there then <laughs> yeah uh it's like come we have on. our own morning zoo program yeah come on yeah <laughs> so Come on. Again, we got a great show for you listeners today. We'll start out by giving a brief review on our score for the movie. We score on a scale of 1 to 10. After we give our score, we'll get into spoilers and take a deeper dive into what we liked and hated about the film. Later on, uh, we're going to be playing a game called Horrible or Hilarious Final Destinations. Ooh. We'll uh, start explaining that. We'll pit David against Fart um, like right. in this game well, since we got well, two players. Um, so final destination can be found in places. Um, it's got like five days left on Tubi. I'm not sure where it will be after that. Um, and I'm sure by the time this episode's released, it's not going to be on Tubi anymore. So, uh, choose your favorite Google source to find out where 
Final Destination's playing. Okay. Anyways, uh, Final Destination is about Alex, don't call him a psychic browning, along with 40 <laughs> other high school students board a plane to Paris for a school trip. Uh, while boarding, Alex has a vision of the plane exploding and killing everyone on board. He causes a scene when he tries to warn others, and as a result, Alex, five other students, and one of their teachers are forced to leave the plane. Which is strangely prescient. Like, there's so many YouTube videos now. Just anyone making any kind of display of dissatisfaction on planes are getting kicked out now. We're done. <laughs> We're done. We're not doing this. Um, while arguing in the terminal, they all witness the plane explode upon taking off. Uh, they're all stunned that they have cheated death, yet soon find out that death will not be cheated. Because, as the film posits, death a motherfucker. Um, <laughs> okay. Yep, it is. Wow. Yeah, well, <laughs> well said. Uh, Final Destination Rip. and the franchise that follows crack the code of what horror fans really want. Amusing deaths. That's all we want. We don't really care if it's a knife-wielding psychopath, an ancient demon, or a possessed doll. As long as there are deaths that we can chuckle about and talk about afterwards, we're game. So Final Destination removes all the clutter and just focuses on delivering elaborate and ridiculous deaths. Sure, it throws in some explanations and rules um, for the franchise for why it happens and, and how death is picking its next victim. But that's all window dressing. It's a very thin plot, and what's really important is the ridiculous deaths. Uh, the result um, is like a shared understanding between the audience and the filmmakers that this is a campy, fun horror movie, and you know what you're getting from it. It's a transaction, and it fulfills that transaction. It's a fun watch. Um, this is the first time I've actually sat and watched final destination any of the final destinations although i've seen you know obviously clips from some of the deaths like you, you know what you're getting when you get into it i think there's um, five of them so far yeah yeah there's final destination final destination two final destination three the, the final destination oh and then Final Destination 5. They always right. do that to themselves. <laughs> They're, like, <laughs> They're like, never mind. This we'll is go it. back to numbers. <laughs> We're done. And then it's like, oh, oh, oh I, what I meant was uh, Freddy's back. Um, right. Um, so, I mean, it was enjoyable. Like, it is what it is. It's not trying to be something bigger or more elaborate or more involved or more entertaining than what it promises. And I think it pulls it off successfully i imagine like the the sequels get pretty crazy kind of the same thing with like if you watch saw versus saw four it's like there's a arms race for <laughs> more ridiculous deaths um and this one doesn't quite get there but it has enough and like the filmmaking of it just makes it entertaining enough that you're like this is dumb but how can you not like it um i'd, I'd give it a score of seven out of ten Wow. Now this, I before before we give before Fart gives his uh, his rendition, his score, his feelings about all this. I'd like to ask. Now this is a James Wan directed and I think written movie. Um, and uh, James Wan, for some reason, is like a really big deal. He's a he's a big name in horror, and uh, and as far as I can tell. This is why, like, it's, it's just has to do with Final Destination. I, I, right? Well, it looks like he's wow. more of a producer than a director. Yeah, he's a writer on a lot of things. Yeah, but if you look at those things, it's still just kind of Final Destination, right? <laughs> yeah, there's nothing. He's he's okay. His directing credits are Final Destination, Final Destination Three <laughs> are the ones that you'd recognize. He also did. The one, yeah, some dr Dragon Ball movies, and some X Files episodes, and American Horror Story episodes. Yeah, it's it's a little. I, I don't know. I just I just have never really understood James Wong 
and why he's a big deal. And I, I mean, I mean, Final Destination is a good enough reason for him to be a, a big deal. It's just it seems like there should be more there. But uh, so that's that's all I had to say about that. Okay. Yeah. What do you? Yeah, think I don't about know anything else. I, I don't know much about the guy, so I really don't know. I'm not familiar other than Final Destination. You rattled off a few other ones. Never heard of them. I don't even think I saw the third one. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't even know why he's notable. Like, what is he known for? Just can't be kind of silly. It looks like he's mostly doing TV. Like he's yeah. As a writer, he's he's doing more as a writer than anything else. Writer, producer. Um, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> this That's seems amazing. like a very, very disposable like franchise that you could give to any up and coming student director mm. to say you want to prove that you have the chops of the cinematic language like show these elaborate deaths in a in a uh understandable way you know yeah what year yeah. was the movie made 2000 yeah it feels like it because they really went you know half the budget was just cgi you can tell just those cutaway <laughs> scenes and shit that had to be half the budget for 2000 um right 2005 yeah. they they picked up the pace but still that year shit was you know frame by frame rendering it was just a lot of work to make tires fly at you yeah i mean there's a lot of obvious cues that this is like a 2000s movie like the bad cgi the flat like you know almost like tv production lighting the fact that sean william scott is cast in it um <laughs> lots yeah. of cl lots of clues <laughs> Shots um by. So what would you what would you give Final Destination? Yeah, I so that's the weird before I even give the score. Um it's it's hard to rate it now because I'm stuck in this in between I love really bad shitty horror movies but mm -hmm. that are aware. Um uh -huh. this movie I felt at times it was a little aware like yeah, this these effects are really going to um, fuck these people up but um at other times it seems they were going like full tommy wiseau super serious like really trying to nail these dramatic scenes uh -huh. so if that's what they were going for four out of ten but if they were going uh -huh. for that campy oh not trauma but esque like aware of how ridiculous this is then an eight out of ten for sure but i think i'm gonna go with the four out of ten because i think they were trying kind of hard Oh, yeah, I think it straddles the line. I think it probably at least deserves a five for, for accomplishing both. Like, here's the thing. But did they? Were they intentionally trying to accomplish like both? The, yeah, I mean, I think, like, the serious scenes are, like, when they're talking about, you know, their theories or, like, doing the exposition dump of, like, this is how it works, people. Mm -hmm. um, it's not terrible. Like, I'll say that. It's not. I've seen much, much worse, and the acting for delivering that type of, like, rules set, it's literally like, it's, the, you can, you can do the same scenes, and it will either feel like listening to your mom give you the rules for bridge, mm. or it will feel <laughs> like an actual story of, like, giving you logic about, you know, how you're going to play this you know, a lab board game or whatever. What was and, your score uh, on this one, Bryce? Seven. I didn't mean to cut you off there. Do you, you have a thought to finish? Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's, like, here's the thing. Here's how I see, like, that it is leaning more into the campy fun, is that the one thing that tips it off for me <laughs> is that the water from the toilet in the first one of the first s um Bravo. it makes a clean getaway <laughs> <laughs> the fact that the water retreats and covers its covers its uh you know its tracks yeah. is like i mean it's enough of a touch that it's so ridiculous and stupid and like makes zero sense but in terms of like storytelling and making a film about death trying to get you like that's just great you know that that is probably the shots that really sold the movie for me the fact that the the water runs away after it kills someone <laughs> <laughs> i 
I I've seen this movie at least two or three times, and um, and I think the first time was in theaters, and uh, I recall it being so ridiculous with the with the jump scares and the loud sounds, and uh, like the sudden jump shot, and mm. uh, and I remember it doing that. Real, not not just like over the top, but but uh, really well, <laughs> and uh, and and that I mean it's not like jump scares weren't in kind of full swing by this time, but they really hadn't been. I don't feel like they'd been done to this degree. You know, like it is a fucking man, it's a menagerie, and it's like that is the crutch of this movie. If I recall, I mean that and the the shock value of 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 a lot of those kills and, and that moment of realizing, Oh, this is what this is like was a pretty delightful moment of being like, okay, I see, I see. This is nothing, but nothing. There's no more veneer over anything. It's just this. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I, I would, I would say it's more of the opposite where, well, yeah, I mean, there's jump scares and there's like surprising moments, but it's wrapped around like the premises just ultimate dramatic irony that you know these people are going to die and you know exactly how they're going to die because it shows you long shots that show you know uh, stripped you know electrical wire and a little drip coming yeah. from a cup and going to show you Something over here that might come into you're like, well, why is it showing us that clock? That must mean something. Right. It's you all know, subversion. It does that for like five minutes. And then often it just pulls off the kill. But sometimes it's like, ha, got past you. You didn't get me. And then yeah. jump scare. <laughs> they kill him in some other way. Yeah. And that's like the two methodologies of the film. So it does both. Um yeah, but I, I I found it enjoyable um, for what it is, and I imagine the the other films are similar. Um, um, you know what's similar? You you know what you you experience over and over again? Ads. Yeah. You don't want that. If you're listening to the commercials, <laughs> um, or should you be more should like know this. you don't. There you go. For the cost of one cup of coffee a month, you too to can save this golden retriever. <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't have to listen to ads. Uh, you can go to Patreon and join our Patreon and get early access to episodes <laughs> without ads. Um, also, you can support the show by going to our shop at horrormovietalk.com slash shop. And you can uh, check out our resident artist, Dustin Goebel. Um, on Instagram at D G O E B E L zero zero, make your artistic dreams come true. Yeah. If you want to call, leave us a voicemail. <laughs> call six eight two two five three four four six eight. Um. Thanks again for listening. Let's get into spoilers. It says Fart Simpson's computer stopped recording. Hey, sport! My girl use your binoculars? <laughs> when they start off with that whole scene, then I guess, yeah, maybe you are right. They're setting the tone on how ridiculous it's going to be as, like, uh, this hillbilly's girlfriend's taking a sip out of some booze or something. What? When was that? Uh, I don't remember that. The NASCAR race at the beginning? Oh, shit, did you watch a different movie? I think you watched a different movie, Fart. And at this moment, Fart realized he indeed watched the wrong movie. He watched <laughs> The Final Destination. Yeah. You watched The Final Destination. We're watching Final where Destination. Did you, where did you watch it? Oh, I'm so interested in what hap- what's the, how's the, how this is going to play out. Because you know what? If he watched a different movie, it won't matter, really. <laughs> of course it will. It won't matter. They're all the same movie. It's just different vehicles. It's just different 
I oh man, I'm so excited. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. There's two movies and the word the separates the two. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Which which one did you watch? He watched the, the one, one from one... two thousand nine. Where they're predicting the everybody's deaths. Right. Oh, yes. Right. No, You're we're correct. still here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Final destination. But that doesn't really differentiate anything. Mm-hmm. But the Where'd... whole plane crash in the beginning, that never happened in the one that you saw? <laughs> I don't remember Stifler being in it, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yay! Oh, wow. This will be a fun episode. One person has seen the actual movie we're talking about. David seen it years ago. And Fart saw a different movie in the franchise. <laughs> And yet the version you watched still had shitty CGI that made you think it was 2000. Right. Correct. Yeah, that's because that's the other thing is like the first one doesn't actually have that much CGI. I was like, huh, I didn't really notice that. Fucking hell. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <sighs> um, this is so to answer your question, David. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't live in the Pacific Northwest anymore. That's pretty huge. Whoa. And uh, it is. Oh, this is amazing. To get the fuck out of Portland. <laughs> Isn't well, it great? Unbelievable. You yeah. say that, but I've got a video that's going to give you get you real homesick fart. Yeah, so this will. Put, it won't. I still have this, to come back and forth, so I get a little dose of Portland every four or five months. Well, but okay. Uh, don't don't Pre- knock it till you see yourself. it. Put, you, put, you know. put me All up right. on like full screen gotcha. and, and just let this... Like, let the Portland wash over you. Yes. Yummy gummy. This is very Final Destination, by the way. I like how the cameraman knew. He was just like, I got yeah, it. Yeah, I gotta say, like, also very just prescient. Appreciate, appreciate the cinematography yeah. on this video. Because he does a real good job. Ooh, yeah, that's a nice uh, dolly shot. Oh, this could be New York. Oh, you went for a belly, a belly punch. In the bushes. Get in your car Joe, and be a man. Joe, be a help us. Man. Call the cops. She threw something out of our car. Yeah. Please. Do you didn't know what you did? Are you going to say what you did? You didn't do nothing, You're right? crazy. Oh, okay. Whatever you say, baby. Please call the police. You guys got it burning into my car. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh. Dude, there's eight kids next to that shop on your team. Eight children. Three are mine. Chills. <laughs> Chills. Jack, I yeah, this is. I mean. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah well, dude. That could couple things be, about this. That could that be New you're... York. That really. Uh, I mean, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Bryce. Doesn't it bring you right back, though? I mean, it actually just brings not... you back to living in San Francisco. Go ahead. Yeah, the thing about it being Portland is that there's not actually that much traffic. Like, there's not, like, a billion people behind these people honking at him. You know? Um, well, this is the middle of the day, Bryce. These people aren't commuting to work. They're coming from, you know, shooting meth. And... I don't know. This either looks like dawn or dusk. You know, I mean, look at that horizon. That yeah. looks like it's either late or very early. But, uh, I mean, a couple things to appreciate this as a viral video. First of mm. all. This cast of characters oh, is just, you know, par excellence. Mm. And then, you know, bat guy comes out of the blue and perfect. I mean, look at this. This is like, look Good at the framing of ahead. this. You couldn't, yeah, a you couldn't superhero. make this even better than having it in the distance. Have like a, and he's panning and Get we've got everyone car, in dude. frame. Look at this. Like, this is a Spielberg one shot. What's happening here? <laughs> the fucking and, dude with 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 calf warmers and bicep warner, warmers coming out of nowhere and being like, "Be a man, dude! Get in your car! Get in your car!" It's like, Fuck. 
And then finally, just the the thing that what? makes it perfect. The cameraman says nothing. He's not <laughs> not a word. He's not even He's there. just like a BBC yeah. nature documentary. You Doesn't know. step in to save anything. It's just like, <laughs> this is nature. Nature playing out. It's, I mean, if that doesn't make you miss Portland, I don't know what does. But I'm sure they all made up once they got to their tent off the off ramp. Yeah, I didn't see a lot of the main interactions I would see with the public or, or, or just the people on the street with the homeless. It was more like finger wagging at them like why are you doing this you need to move this over here and i'm like you know that they have no fucking clue what you're saying <laughs> all this this uh finger wagging is, is, is nothing so i saw a lot of that and like you know old who women. from whom who uh, just just like in front of my job um because there's quite a few uh tents around so there's a lot of um mm-hmm. drug use it, it's it's known where i live it's more the industrial or where my job was it's right. more the industrial side of portland so uh, they can get away with a lot more so there's the locals that live around there that feel like they have to walk around and tell them you got to move this and clean up this and you got your human shit right in front of my door can we get it moved and i'm like they're not going to clean it. And also, they're just not going to. Uh, uh, so I didn't see a lot of like really aggressive interactions like this one, because this seems like, you know, what one person rear ended the other person when they're driving. Mm. No, from what I gather, <laughs> there is a, there's a sequence of events. Um, car, the car behind this. So the following car, mm-hmm. uh, white car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the Volkswagen. Something happened where there was a near miss, or they drove really oh, close to sure some children bushes. in a bush or something. Children mm. in a bush within yeah. eight mm-hmm. or five feet. It's unclear. Um, yeah. But it, three out of those eight were children of girl in front, right? Um, in the attractive, you know, half shirt, and with that, with that and then after fade. that happens. Uh, girl in half shirt gets angry and throws something from her car to hit white car, and that's mm. where the contention starts. Um, yeah, right around the Vanport historical marker, which is yeah, is the it, next it, right. It goes something like, "How dare you sideswipe that bush? Don't you know that there's eight children living in that bush?" <laughs> <laughs> that's probably so. what it is. <laughs> And then, you know, three of those eight children are mine. And, and you know, it's like, well, shouldn't you be taking care of What are your three kids doing in the bush? And why are you driving away from there? Uh, you should be watching your three killed children in the bush because people are apparently sideswiping it. So, I mean, the real, the sequels and the prequels will be dedicated to Batman. Like, this is where... The magic happened. Oh, I mean, that's just a perfect shot. Look at that. Yeah, that's a good just... shot. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> look at her. She's so upset. Um, An angry yeah. lime. I, I just, we just had a like an onsite for our, our work, so we had like a. That means going couple, to the office. Couple days where we actually went into the office and did activities together, and they flew in some people from across the country. And I'll say, like, the main difference between Portland now and, like, Portland three years ago is there is noticeably less encampments. Like, there's not tents everywhere. Like, there's less tents because they did change some city laws to say you can't camp on sidewalks during the day. Like, obviously, well, that isn't still maintained. Keeping in enforced. mind that your office is in downtown. I mean, they just yeah. pushed those out to Gresham and Clackamas, you know. Sure. It's yeah, like, yeah, a little bit. But, I mean, like, our office was, like, there was – it's right next to, like, the Morrison Bridge. So, like, there was a huge encampment underneath mm-hmm. the, the Morrison Bridge. Um, and so there's less of that, but a lot more direct encounters with people gacked out of their mind <laughs> and, like, just have, like, open, open sores and are just, like <gasps> – fucking ruined shells of people on drugs like there's a lot more of those like every every block had one (laughs) that was like yelling or just out of it and walking around and picking at 
you know, scabs that have been infected for the last week and a half. Um, Gross. Yeah. So that's that's the difference now. Um, and uh, I think everyone just agrees that the experiment to legalize hard drugs well, probably, probably isn't a good idea if you well, don't actually do it. Well, it's fine to legalize them. You got to follow it up. <laughs> right. But I will say that uh, that there's a place up here, a uh, north suburb of Seattle called Everett, that is much worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I was like, oh, holy shit, <laughs> this place is insane. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, those those Cretans that you're talking about are just they own the city. Like it's like, whoa, yeah, fun times. West Coast, not yeah. Not in I, I exchanged it for I live uh, in East LA, so I'm just surrounded by like some MS13 and, and shit like that now. So it's a different vibe, but I'd actually prefer it here than where I was in Portland for sure because uh, yeah. I was putting up with all that bullshit, and and I had like my house getting fucked with before I moved out of Portland a lot, and um, the price I was paying was if not the same or cheaper than over here so yeah it was an easy exchange of like why am i torturing myself here working and paying these prices and dealing with the riffraff when i can do the same shit over here and i actually pay uh a lot less in la surprisingly so that's insane ah, yeah, no! portland who was who and how, was it your roommate fucking with your house or was your house getting fucked with by exterior forces exterior forces so yeah we had i remember on my way out moving from that area there was two motorcycles across the street both with uh nazi stickers and shit on the on the motorcycles so when meth got legalized and they created the super meth obviously the bikers came in and it brought in some fucking really hard <laughs> nazi-ish uh bikers into portland and i saw their two uh, motorcycles like every day as I was coming home from work just sitting out one of them used to shower with the hose out front um yeah yeah and then I yeah dude he was showering with water and two uh, liter coca-cola <laughs> he shower with a two liter coca-cola two liter coca-cola anyway so so that's um, great and, and and so far life is a lot better now over here nice I'm really yeah I mean you. it really adds to the human dignity that the crime is organized in mm -hmm. LA, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's organized. one thing to be robbed by tweakers that are just trying to strip all of your wiring for scrap <laughs> copper versus, you know, organized criminals that are uh, have an oh, operation man. behind it and the a philosophy. Whistle, the whistle game in my neighborhood is amazing. You hear all these like beep, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. and like they have it. They're, it's communication. So when I first moved drop. here, <laughs> oh, don't worry, I will. Um, <laughs> I was like, cool, this is uh, organized. I mean, not cool, but kind of was cool because there's a dumb white dude in East L.A. It's, it's like, the, uh, it's like the, the tribes of the, the uncontacted tribes in the Amazon. Now they start talking in capuchin monkey, and you're like, oh, wait a minute. That doesn't sound like a regular monkey. It sounds like a person monkey. The, the whistling uh, was throwing me off for a couple of days. I was like, what fucking birds are doing this? I'm such an idiot. I'm thinking it's birds. And uh, yeah, no, it wasn't. Speaking of birds, there's a parrot. I saw a whole, a whole TikTok video dedicated to, uh, what was it in Spanish? The chinga tu madre, which is fuck your mother. Ooh. Um, and... It's like oh, wow. a part of their language, and there's a whistle specifically for it mm. um, that they use to communicate chinga tu madre, which is uh, – I'm, I'm terrible at whistling, but it's – I thought that was Bryce whistling for a second. <laughs> I was like, wow, Bryce is really good Yeah, I'll do it again. Here, watch. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> I missed it. There you go. Stop it. Oh, Get it. some help. Um, okay, well... Uh, oh, damn it. And I can't play my favorite drop, too, that I pulled from my final destination that I watched. Oh, man. <laughs> that would have... Oh, drop. shit. You had sent, like, the link to the movie. Oh, yeah. That would have solved it. If I had opened that and looked at it, I, I would have known immediately. Damn it. Just for that, Bryce, you're going to get this. All right, hold on, you son of a bitch. This is for oh, you, Oh, yeah. Bryce. This is... This is just to be clear, I like little children. That's your punishment for not opening up the video file. I do like little children. I got I got little kids. Yeah. 
Hell yeah. Um, so, okay. So, before, this was a fun game. I've never actually watched any of the Final Destination movies. Um, you never have. I haven't. So I started out like writing down some predictions of what deaths were going to be in the movie. Um, I didn't get a single one. Not mm. a single one. But my predictions for what I was going to see. I th- I know of the logging truck one because that's like a meme at this point. Mm. That you don't drive behind a logging truck because of Final Destination. Um, it wasn't in this one. Um, so I guess like there's going to be someone that dies from choking on food. That seems like an obvious one. Uh, someone dies from a piano on their head. Um, I thought they would have gone Acme and they didn't. <laughs> um, snake bite, no snake bite. And then finally an industrial lathe. And that's more of a personal preference mm. for me, but nothing, nothing of the sort happened in this one, which really tells you how many possibilities there are. Um, the one that was like obvious that I didn't list would have been slipping in the shower. And that was basically the first death in this movie, um, where the, like the main friend of the main character, Alex, he's in his bathroom and you see his toilet start leaking, dripping water onto the floor. And there's this great storytelling of the the water which is slightly blue for some reason even though it was leaking straight out of the wall um traveling across the tile floor in the cracks heading towards him towards his feet as he's like shaving Mm -hmm. and then like traveling what was traveling towards him water on the ground so water is like kind of like expanding across the just the cracks of the of the tile and it's trying to reach his feet you know because He's going to slip and hurt himself. And then right as it gets to him, he steps, he walks away. And then you see the water go, ah, shucks. And then then eventually it gets him. He slips, um, tries to brace himself, and then ends up wrapping the uh, clothesline around his neck. And he he, um, scrambles on inside the the bathtub and can't find purchase. And he, he... he dies. He expires. And then you're on mute, David. David, you're muted. Good. Perfect. Very good. Imagine, imagine hanging yourself just because your feet can't find perches. Like, right. It's like, it's like, well, wait a minute. Just <laughs> yeah, play the play the 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 xylophone running sounds. Fart. <laughs> <laughs> or just the, or the, or just the the coconut. Yeah, that's what his his feet are on on the bathtub. And, yeah, and it's... that that's like the first death in the movie. Um, there's a lot of like foreshadowing. There's a lot of like scenes before the airport um, of Alex just being really paranoid, <laughs> and like it like establishes this dread. Um, and I like the, the nice touch that they're inside the airport and then the, the camera just focuses on the word terminal. (laughs) Um, and let's see what, what other stuff? Oh yeah. And then the, like, it shows like this premonition of the plane flying. And one of the best parts is it just really dwells on a bunch of whoppers that are rolling around on the floor of the plane. Whoppers. Oh, okay. I was like, Oh no, not the whoppers. Could have had those, um, yeah. So the the other the other deaths in this one are like a pretty elaborate one with this teacher. She has a cracked mug that leaks out her tea, and she sets it on top of her like CRT monitor, and it leaks inside. And what is it? The monitor explodes, throwing a shard of glass into her trachea oh crt monitors i forgot you there were monitors with glass you're right and then she's trying to save herself from that and then all of a sudden like this trail of some flammable liquid like catches fire her whole kitchen goes on fire and she's trying to escape that and then she slips on the floor from the drippings from her teacup and then a just a a butcher knife falls and stabs her in the heart (laughs) 
<laughs> it's like a lot of like Rube Goldberg like invention type deaths. Yeah, it's okay. So you're telling me there's two kills in a row that are due to slippery water on the floor. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Water is very important in this movie in particular because another death um is around or like it's alluded to be from electrocution. Um and then, you know, a pool breaks and so the the hanging electrical wire from the pole is touching the water and you got to get away from it. I'm the, the rest the other half of the movie is more like fake outs. Like there's a lot more it's setting up something to happen and then it doesn't and then something sudden happens. Okay. So far how does this parallel to your final destination? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh super silly deaths like um uh I think one that really stood out was the notable um escalator something fucked up an escalator and she got chewed through so when you mentioned something about Ooh. somebody getting chewed through something i was like still thinking are you sure we saw the wrong movie <laughs> but no like, we did. uh so i mean yeah so far pretty parallel um <laughs> but again i don't think i've seen the one that bryce saw yeah. in terms in terms of in terms of things in real life that scare me more than they should <laughs> i gotta tell you escalators is very high on that list and i don't know why exactly i don't know what oh, I yeah. saw. i've seen i've seen i've seen enough like like cctv camera footage of people falling through the panels mm -hmm. you know each stair is like a panel on escalators and i've seen enough like footage of like usually unfortunately i don't know why it's it's this way but Usually it's a small Asian woman falling through an escalator panel and assume I'm assuming there's just gears under there just like grinding away mm -hmm. constantly mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. just getting ground up. And and in my head, the picture is a little kid looking down, you know, into the where <laughs> mom was, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, there's is, that. Do, are you guys scared? Does Do you have the escalator fear at all? Um... No, I mean, I think about it a little like I think when you're a kid, your your parents make it a big point that like don't let your pants or something get caught in that like at the end of it. Like you really got to step over. You're like doing a yeah. full like cowboy dismounting a horse when you get off or on an escalator. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> and um, But mostly I'm just waiting, you know, just I get on an escalator until that final moment and then, then I'll be like. Ah, curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay, this, there's two more things I, I got to say about the. First of all, if you're standing on an escalator, boo. Like, boo, okay? Why are we just standing? We should be moving up it or down it. Uh, where do you guys stand on that? Are you standers or movers? I'm a stander. I'm a mover. Okay, okay good. Okay, I'll, I'll say if I'm going down, I'll walk down the escalator. Okay. If good. I'm going up, I'm not going to do it. Well, I'll machine. take 50%. 50% is better than zero. And then the other uh -huh. thing is this movie really tries to cover all the bases of fears. You know, I guess I mm -hmm. guess slashers generally try to do that. You know, it's like, well, you could die in your sleep or, well, except for like Friday the 13th mo movies. But, you know, they really try to throw a real smorgasbord of different things to be scared of. You know, oh, you, have you ever thought about logging trucks? And it's like, oh, shit. Well, it's really man. a horror movie for OSHA inspectors, you know? It's <laughs> it's for people that are paranoid about safety and things going wrong. Like, right. It's very much like you look all around, you're like, well, that's how that could kill me. And, like, the, I've heard a story of that doing that. And, like, you never know. But last night, I called you, Bryce, because I had finished watching Conan the Barbarian on Netflix mm -hmm. and... Uh, for our pretentious review that'll be available on patreon and and it, it was like hey you'd probably like cliffhanger too and i was like i've never seen cliffhanger that's a 90s movie that i've never seen how about that uh -huh. i'm seven minutes into cliffhanger and i was shook i was like <laughs> i cannot i can't do this this is too much i got well, you were you were specifically saying that like you realized how much of a phobia of heights you have when you're yeah. watching Conan. I still don't know exact. I'm assuming it's the the scene where they're climbing up the tower or going down the ropes, because I couldn't understand which 
scene. What would are we talking about? That. Are we talking oh, about cliffhanger? Conan the Barbarian. No, I, no, I, I just. <laughs> there's no fear of heights in Conan. It was just the movie that came on after Conan on Netflix. Was oh, <laughs> okay. You didn't. I thought you were talking about Conan the Barbarian. So the whole time no, I was like, I started Cliffhanger afterwards. I got seven minutes into it, and I was like, "Fucking shit! I'm not watching this shit." Like, because it's just all about like uh, um, vertigo and like being yeah. way too high and hanging on by one finger. And I'm like, "No, no, no, no!" Oh, no. that's so confusing. Because I thought you're. <laughs> that must have been confusing to you too, then, because I thought you were saying there's a moment in Conan. Oh, and I okay. hadn't seen it at this point, that there was an actual cliffhanger. This is like listening to somebody talk <laughs> about the dream that they okay. had. This is like so ridiculous. So, and then, I, and then I suggested you watch Cliffhanger, which is the movie you're talking about. <laughs> what the <sighs> fuck? Press my fingers into my eyes. Okay. <laughs> God damn, man. Um, <laughs> oh, no. So, yeah. So, I had an idea for a sequel. Mm. Like, I think they could probably let it wait uh, like another... Well, I guess I guess this won't work because there's no original cast left over. But let's just say a couple years down the road, Final Destination 12, Natural Causes. <laughs> <laughs> so just have it like huh. they avoid death. They avoid like a train crash. You know, they jump out off the train just before a horrible event. Danny and then Brown. death is coming for them. Um, and then eventually it cuts to them and they're like, when they're 95 and they're just <laughs> gasping for breath in hospice. There's like, <gasps> oh, Jesus Christ. <gasps> the guy got like, Terminator like, too. Yeah. Yeah. And then, or someone just has a, a, a heart attack, you know? Right. Yeah. No, it's pretty <laughs> impressive. That I think, we had... I think there's, I think there's space for it. I'm just saying in the franchise, Hollywood, you know, look me up. This is no, this is no like, this is no like new thought or anything like that. But um, it's pretty impressive to die of things that aren't trying to eat you. you know? right. <laughs> Historically speaking, you know, like over the course of history, uh -huh. you know, everything dies because something's trying to eat it. You know? Right. But it just in the last couple hundred years, it hasn't been that way specifically for humans, and we're still like, oh, life sucks. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you there's a lot it, of there's a lot of fear about catastrophic deaths. Like there's a lot of like anxiety around like accidents or, you know, falling off of a cliff. And like historically what you really have to fear is like an infection, mm -hmm. you know? Um you like step on a uh like a Lego and it opens a little tiny wound and you just don't wash it after and you, you just know, like, die. And then he just died. Or just natural causes. I mean, just death in general is coming for you. And no one knows how it's going to happen, but it's definitely going to happen. Oh, yeah. It's definitely not going to happen the way it did in the movie that I watched. That's for sure. Because <laughs> well, the ha deaths in that. For instance, like, uh, the lead sees this dude's death and he's like, I got to catch it and tell him before it actually happens. And maybe we can break the cycle. And, uh, he gets there and the guy's a car mechanic and he's working on the truck and you know, obviously they're setting it all up with shots, things jiggling and all this bullshit to fast forward to like, yeah, an oil can spills onto something which shoots this out, which then <laughs> projects uh, like a nitrous tank out of the car shop. And, it hits him in the chest and presses him against a fence and then pushes his guts through the fence holes. <laughs> I was like, I, uh, I wouldn't be too mad if that's how I died. That is a fucking legend story, dude. If you're like, how did Fart die? Oh, this nitrous tank pushed him against a fence and then pushed his guts through. And then you could see the people in amazement through the holes in his body through the fence. Wow. Nothing of it was ever, none, none, none of it was believable. But also the the movie that I saw, the deaths just kept getting more and more extravagant. They kept pushing it further and further on how ridiculous of like a mousetrap type game scenario we can have these little sequence of events happen to then lead to a very unexpected death. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. What? Well, okay. 
So all of these all of these Final Destination movies are about like we, death is is like one step behind and it's trying to catch up. It's catching up to us. It's getting us. It's it's trying to grab us. And we are it's our job to try and outsmart it somehow. Yeah. Um, so the rules in the movie that it explains is there's a grand design for all of your deaths. And if you cheat death, if you like go against the grand design, mm-hmm. then it's you've got a bill that needs to be paid and death comes up with a new plan. And in this movie, it basically says like the order in which people were supposed to die. Right. Is the order that it's going to go after them. No, and then because she you... was sitting in the row in front of me and that <laughs> compact. Yeah. Right. And then if you interfere and cheat death again, it skips that person, goes to the next one and then comes back. You know, mm. death's very organized is, is what it comes down to. And, uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead and say what you're saying. So my, so my, my question now is, okay, so what's the best way to die? Like, what's the ideal way that Bryce Hansen or Fart Simpson or David Day dies? Like, what's the best way to go? You know, like, like even better than best case scenario. Something about sex. For Bryce, it's going to be like get nailed in the ass. Um, <laughs> mine, mine is like getting like instantaneously and without my knowledge, getting exploded into a mist. Just mm-hmm. nothing, nothing left. Like you're there and then gone. Okay, but I was thinking like sex. You know, like you, you know. animal. Yeah, but if I died while having sex, then the person I'm having sex with dies because I fall on top of them. And <laughs> it's just, I'd feel too bad. We'd be at the pearly gates and be you like, You wouldn't feel anything. You'd be sorry. dead. Wow. No, but you'd see him in the afterlife and be like, Standing right next to line, in line to them in the pearly uh, gates. You're like, Yeah, I'm like, Boners. Sorry. You knew. <laughs> Boners. You knew the dangers. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, if anyone chooses it, what's what's most telling about this question mm. is no one chooses hospice for five weeks, <laughs> 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 where your organs so slowly shut down <laughs> and your family is crying at your bedside. <laughs> no one chooses old age <laughs> or the reality of old age of dying of old age. That's literally every single person now. It's all of them. It's like it's like the fucking most depressingly tragic fucking shit. And I wasn't there. I couldn't get off work. Natural causes. That sounds riveting. I'm I'm into that. I could. Sit I know. In a slow. And it's only the of a final destination. Room. Yeah, final destination twelve natural causes. There's only one person. <laughs> it's just you sit it's just with the one suffering of that one person <laughs> one 98 year old man as he's his body is slowly shutting down in hospice and, and it's like as brutal as the whale you know yeah you're like yeah, yeah, there, yeah he's just like oh no <laughs> he's <laughs> alone all his friends have already died <laughs> uh, yeah uh, okay anyways. Fart, what's your best way to go? <laughs> well, I, I, I'm not going to go. I see mine's – I, I want to be funny, so mine's a two-parter. So definitely jumping off a bridge with a noose so then the cars can hit me as they're driving by on the freeway. <laughs> so wow. it's kind of like a little um, pinata type of situation. And then when they're going to bury me, you got to bury me unmarked so then I can get one good scare in with like maybe – 30, 40 years mm. down the line, somebody digs me up and they find my skeleton. That's the, that's, that's the goof I want. I truly hope that somebody could like mistakenly find my skeleton. That would be that's awesome. Good. My, be good. my like Hunter S. Thompson answer of like what would be a good just like a show death or, yeah. you know, just like yeah, yeah. just a good like send off um, would be decapitated with a guillotine into a catapult. Jesus. Or <laughs> and the head falls in the trebuchet. It immediately yeah. goes <laughs> off, crashes through the window of like a middle aged woman <laughs> that's a widow that's a widow uh-huh. and falls into her lap and like the last seven seconds of consciousness that the blood in my brain still has will witness her surprise and then 
<laughs> get to meet her in the afterlife and be like, hey, I pranked you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> While your last seven seconds, you're just going. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, I think um, it's not a way to die, but I really like there was a Nick Swardson album or joke or, or set where he said, uh, you know, when I die, uh, I, I want it to be, I just want it to be really traumatic for my mother. And, <laughs> and so, you know, at the funeral, Aww. everybody, it'll be a closed casket so that everybody will think my body will be in the closed casket, but it won't be. It'll, <laughs> it'll come down on wires from the ceiling and then they'll hit it with strobe lights and EDM music and, nsh, nsh, nsh. and my mom will just be in the corner being like, what was Nicholas into? <laughs> you know, like, It'll be yeah. the techno version of the Pinocchio got no strings. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be a, mar- <laughs> a marionette of your like rigor mortis body. Oh, right. Fuck. Right. Yeah. So what's, what would be the worst way to go? The, the, the contrast, what, what would be the worst death? Cancer. The worst? Yeah. <laughs> <A wasting. laughs> I've seen too many family and close ones go from that. That's got to be the worst. No, yeah, yeah cancer for sure. Cancer, or, yeah. I mean, or good. MS. I mean, that's a slow burn. Oh, dude. You know, but MS, MS. I feel like you could get some quality time in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a slow burn, but towards the end, yep, you're gonna be. Um, I wish I had the bones rattling sound effect. Damn it! Oh, God, or what about um, what's it? Whatever Stephen Hawking had, just like where you, oh dude, you slowly well, lose muscle control and you're just locked in for the uh, last like ALS. twenty years of your life. No, 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 no. I mean, well, there are. He had the good version of that. I had an acquaint, well, a pretty good friend who died of that the fast way, and it mm. was Lou Gehrig's disease, and it was, it was not. Yeah, you're definitely right about that. It was fucking horrible. Um, well, on that fine fun note let's move on to our game <laughs> ever played donkey punch there was a great um, line in the final destination just really quick i wanted to always there's okay. a there's a scene where this is kind of maybe where it set me off where i think they are they're like i think they're taking the piss out of the audience by doing this but there's this really dramatic scene this guy's like they're all like yeah thank goodness we didn't die in this scenario blah blah, blah. and then the guy turns around and he says this let me get the cookies <laughs> Let me get the cookies. <laughs> and, get the cookies. That's it. and he just turns around and walks out, and that's the closing scene. And I was like, that is some Tommy Wiseau shit. Let me get the cookies. That's, that's cookies. pretty good. I think you know, the the kind of not I mean not necessarily the equivalent, but in, in the first movie, there's the asshole character that is for absolutely no reason he's an asshole to like everyone. Um but he's like the you know, it, he'd be like the greaser um in a Stephen King uh, novel that picks on kids but he's just an asshole and he has a line that's just plain I'm never going to die <laughs> uh, which this is, is a... another one of those what's winking at the camera I think okay, they should have well... went oh wait oh wait we're going to the game but I will on that whole uh, what they should do with future, uh, Final Destinations in the future I think for the one that you mentioned which is the um, <laughs> where they die of just old age it could be an ongoing Abbott and Costello type of joke where they say things like this. Well, who's next? I don't remember. And it just goes back and forth. <laughs> who's next? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> and you, I don't even know who's going to die. <laughs> anyway. Right. Um, yeah, so let's uh, move on. I think we've covered... Let me get the cookies. Let, let, let me just cover the other death. So, like, I think the only other death that's not that I haven't mentioned is the most boring one, which is just one of the girls gets hit by a, a bus. Um, yeah, but that I, that one, that one is the one I remember the most. Really? Yeah. Oh my God! Yes. Like I remember that bus hit just because it was so shocking out of the blue. It was like, oh, you know, like Jim to Christmas. And then also, I guess Sean William Scott was killed after a fake out, like with a piece of scrap metal getting shot at him from a train, hmm. and he decap gets decapitated. Anyways, um, I mean, you know what you're getting into with these Final Destination movies. Like, it is it is what it is. Like, if you want to see elaborate deaths, 
without much else, like watch Final Destination. Yeah. And there's a game inside of this episode, which as the person listening, they need to kind of figure out which movie we're even talking about <laughs> as we're going <laughs> through it. That it could be a game in itself. Because right. there's right, so, exactly. No, yeah. This actually, I mean, I think this game, <laughs> this game that we're just going to play is going to tie this all together. So I'm calling what? this horrible or hilarious Final Destinations. I have a list of deaths, and you have to guess whether this is a real death we should feel bad about or a hilarious death from a Final Destination movie. Mm. Okay? Okay. Mm. Okay. So it'll be uh, Fart versus David for each of these, and I'll keep track of the score. And uh, we'll get started. I don't know how many of these we have, oh, but yeah. uh, we'll, get, we'll get through them. Is okay. Bussin'? Death number one. Um, they get in a car crash and survive a PVC pipe nearly impaling them. But when the firefighters jaws of life, uh, accidentally, accidentally trip the airbag, um, they're shoved into the PVC pipe and die from being impaled through the head. Oh, what? Wow. Should you feel horrible? Is that horrible or hilarious? Horrible would be that happened in real life and a real person died and their family mourned them. Or hilarious is it's part of a horror movie that um, is showing elaborate deaths. Who's going first? David, you can go first. I think that's horrible. Okay. That sounds like it could really happen. Okay. Fart, so what do you think? What set off? What triggered the airbags? The jaws um, of life. She survived a car crash and Almost yeah, yeah. got impaled through the head by a PVC pipe. But then the jaws of um, life triggered the airbags and sent it through. Yes. I'm right, going to say right. that's, I'm, I'm with David. That's horrible. Okay. You're both wrong. That's from Final, Final Destination 2, the character Cat Jones. <laughs> Son of a okay. bitch. Uh... All right. Number two. Uh, oh, that's fa- genius, though. Yeah. A factory worker falls through a grate and impales his head on a giant hook your turn to go first. That's horrible because yeah. that's very believable. Mm. David? Hook. Yeah, I th- well, no. <clears throat> I'll say hilarious. David gets the point. It's hilarious. It's from Fuck. Final Destination 5. Uh, the character Roy. Like, Roy. yeah, I threw that one in because I mean, it's very believable that that, that, could, that could happen. Okay. This one is falling backwards while holding a wine glass. During the fall, the glass shattered on the ground behind her head, and the shards pierced her neck, causing profuse bleeding. Horrible or hilarious? David, I think it's your turn to go first. Yeah, it's my turn. Um, That sound, boy, that sure does sound real. I mean, uh, sounds very possible. But I'm getting a little bit of stank on this game. I'm going to say that's hilarious. Okay, fart. I've been in a similar situation where I uh, I've slipped and almost landed on some broken glass. So, uh, mm. ah, fuck. Let's go with hilarious. So both of you said hilarious? Yeah. Both of you are wrong. Ugh. This is... A real Fuck. death of Charmaine Maxwell, a member of the American R&B group Brownstone. Um, a lot of fans and her family uh, mourned her death, and, and you should feel bad for thinking that that's hilarious. Uh, moving on. <laughs> uh, this one was killed by a falling Buddha statue during an acupuncture appointment. Fart, what say you? Killed Damn. By a- a fall? Oh, they fell onto the Buddha statue, or this? No, Buddha the statue Buddha statue fell, fell on onto them. them and killed them during an acupuncture appointment. Damn, that's believable. That's horrible. Okay, and not that elaborate. I don't, I don't buy it. I, how could a Buddha? You seen Buddha? He's center of gravity so low. He's not tipping <laughs> over anywhere. That's hilarious. He's not on a shelf, or is it on a shelf? No, it fell onto him. So I think it fell onto their head. Yeah, on so a shelf. Still still off, of, off of a shelf or something. I'm going to say it's hilarious. Okay. And Fart, you say horrible. Horrible. Yeah. David gets the point. It's Fuck. from Final Fart. Destination 5. The character's name is Isaac. Oh, you know what? If 
if you use any of the kills from the final destination, farts a shoot. Yeah, he should be able to get that one of those. Mm. Um, actually, I don't think I have any from that <laughs> movie, so you're fucked. <laughs> All right, Dan. All right. Um, there's plenty more. Like you'll you'll be able to catch up, fart. Don't worry. All right, uh, sacrificial goat bought for uh, El Aid or uh, yeah, the Muslim holiday. Jumped off the roof over a protective fence and fell onto him. His father had placed it on the roof of the building where he lived because he could not find another suitable place to keep it. So the death was caused by a goat falling onto him? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) A sacrificial goat. They're planning on sacrificing it later. Whose turn is it? Is it my turn? So the the goat's death isn't tragic. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, who's, I think it's yours, David. I think it's your turn to go first. I mean, no matter how you cut it, that's hilarious. I'm going to say hilarious. <laughs> the goat falls on him. Um, fart, what do you say? I mean, I have to be with David. That's hilarious. It is hilarious. You guys are We're- evil. It's a real death <laughs> of uh, Haval Yadirim. Um, who died tragically at the age of 13 in Turkey. Do so you believe Paul Rubens died? Believe That's it. crazy, yeah. Is that horrible or hilarious? That's, That's horrible. just horrible. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> I think uh, you guys aren't doing great. David has two points, Fart has zero. Um, mm-hmm. Cool. So uh, an electrical short causes two women to be locked in tanning beds, cooking them to death. Oh, come on. That's Final Destination. This is, this is Fart. Yeah, go. Fart. So hilarious. It's it's a movie. Yeah, okay. that's that's hilarious. Uh, come okay. on. You both are it. correct. What is that, that from? Which one? That one's a gimme. That's Final Destination 3. Uh, that was the Ashley other. Ashley and Ashlyn die. Damn. I've seen that. Ah, that's so funny. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't care. Listen. I don't have like, like oh like, it, so in the upcoming election like it's going to be some old rich white guy who doesn't have anybody's uh, you know uh, best interest at heart um, no matter who it is but uh, I will say if it if it ends up being Trump man it's going to be hilarious hilarious <laughs> hilarious <laughs> nobody loves the Bible more than I do nobody <laughs> loves the Bible more than I do <laughs> fuck. Donald Trump is a friend to Putin. <laughs> he's gonna be, he's gonna be so unhinged and old. Like, and he'll have nothing to lose. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, that will be the funniest way for everyone to die. <laughs> I would never do that. I would never do that. Um. Okay. We got. We got. We got several more. We, you, oh. you guys can still catch up. Front, oh. front, you still have a chance. Must we? You're only two behind. Okay. Um. Okay. This death comes from getting their head caught in an elevated door, elevator door, and is decapitated by the elevator as it comes down. Okay, this is me. I'm going to say that's hilarious. There's no way an elevator door to, could decapitate. Oh, I see what it's saying. So It's, it's coming it's down. down. I'm still going to say it's hilarious. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, just for the game, I'm going to go the opposite. Horrible. Yeah, you, you got it. Okay, David wins that round. It's from Final Destination 2. Ugh. Nora. Ooh. 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 All right. Ooh. Next one Ooh. is... Face. <laughs> this person was is that fatally, fatally stabbed in the chest by a beach umbrella blown by a strong wind. <laughs> oh, fuck. Classic. I believe it's Fart's fart? turn to go. Yeah. It's pretty wild. That's pretty wild, as Elon would say. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, dude, that's hilarious and horrible. I don't know. That's a tricky one. Again, if that was me in real life and you said that to my parents, in a way, I know my mother would be crying. My father would be like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he would chuckle. <laughs> so, <laughs> But I guess I'll just go with, uh, let's just go with uh, horrible. It's a fun I was going to. I was also going to say horrible because this, oh man, this could totally happen. You guys are correct. This is a horrible death of a real person, Lottie Michelle Belk, age 55. She's just trying to have a good time 
on the beach. Damn. Oh. Damn. Could have happened to anyone. Um, do you, do you have next. Macho Man drops? Is that what's going on? Do you have some Macho Man drops? <laughs> um, oh, yeah, brother. Ooh. I was actually putting together a Macho Man uh, soundboard recently. Funny you say that, but um, <laughs> or or was it, were those other ones the cream who, of the crap? Were the were those other ones? They were a wrestler for sure, but I just I'm not sure who it was. Was it uh, uh, mm. what's his fucking what's it? Who's that guy who just died? What's that fucking guy's name? Ah! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the impression that I get. <laughs> Okay, All right, Bryce. Moving yeah, on. <laughs> uh, Fart, you still have an opportunity to tie, I think. But after this, it's it's going to be the deciding one. Okay, falling out of a five-story window whilst performing a tango. Um, <laughs> they were demonstrating how to keep their head high by looking at the ceiling and failed to notice the open window behind them. Oh, that sounds like a movie for sure. I'm going to say hilarious. <laughs> Same. Sorry, guys. That's a real death of uh, <laughs> Alberto Fargo of Lisbon, Portugal. Both both get it wrong. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, at this point, I've got two left, and, and Fart's going to lose. But if we want to see how many we can get out of <laughs> yeah. the 11, um, we can do these last two. So carrying a mason jar style drinking glass with a screw top lid in her kitchen when she collapsed... Its 10-inch stainless steel straw entered her light, left eye and pierced her brain. Shit. Oh, shit. I think it's br- David's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's Fart. Oh, Fart. What do you say? So she just slipped in the straw and her mm-hmm. face mm-hmm. through the eyeball. Um, that's very just simple. So it would be for a movie... Not that a lot I mean, of for some of these, I didn't tell the whole but a, setup. But oh, it's eye got trauma. It, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. And also, it's eye trauma, you know? Okay. So well, it's, sometimes that's all it needs to be. I'm going to go with horrible. Yeah, I'm going to say that's hilarious. David, you are wrong. Oh, hey. That is the real death of Elena Struthers Gardner, age 60, in, one of Broadstone, days. Dorset, England. Last like, one. That last sound one. Like Fred Durst. It was amazing. Let's see. Crushed to death by a hatch and a revolving telescope dome. Mm. So they're in like a a a giant telescope, you know, the top of a mountain, and they were crushed to death by the revolving telescope dome. <laughs> it's you this time, right, Fred? Uh, I mean that's very believable because those things are fucking gigantic and i've been to them they are made out of massive steel so i could see cleaning maintenance being done something but then again i'm sure there's a lot of things like a lot of steps you have to do to get those to close so it's not like a one of those whoopsie daisy hit a switch it's now closing kind of thing so i'm gonna go with hilarious okay um i'm also it sounds like a james bond movie that i've seen maybe moonraker i'm gonna say hilarious you're both wrong. It's the tragic death of real astronomer Mark Aronson, age 36. Oh, shit. Tragically Cut died. down in his yeah. wipe. So, um, guys, you did all right. So out of 11, yeah. David got five. He's the winner. And uh, Fart got two. Two patients. So you should feel bad about um, thinking that these real deaths, these tragic deaths of real people are, are hilarious. Hamburgers. And you should really have some examining. You know, examine yourselves and your lives. Um, and on that note, thank yeah. you so much for uh, coming with us and listening to um, an interesting uh, grab bag of, of Final Destination films. Well, is that the nail in the coffin? Uh, I took a shit. <laughs> um, this episode, as always, is produced by Fart Simpson. Do, do, thank do. you, Fart, for do, do, do. editing the episode. Do, 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 do. Got it. <laughs> Thanks to our new patrons. I think we mentioned them all last time, but we can pull them up real quick. Um, (laughs) Thank you for sharing the show. Don't forget to do that. Don't forget to subscribe and and, uh, do all the things we tell you to give us your money. Um, Thanks again to recent new patron, Heather D. Um, Cheese. 
And if you want to call and leave us a voicemail and and, uh, talk about death, call 682-253-4468. Love you, folks. Bye. 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 Thank you for joining us, Fart. Mm -hmm. Good day, sir. Good day, sir. Ah, curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal.